After you've registered your account and you've returned to the login page and entered your email address and password, remember the email address is your user ID, you will see new options in the menu. Under Profile, there is an Edit Profile link. When you choose Edit Profile, you can make changes to the information that you entered when you originally set up your account. However, do not change your company name or your email address once you've been given permission to use the application. Under Permits and Licenses, there will be two options that will be especially important for you. One is the My Permits Licenses link. When you click this link, this is a very helpful list because it shows all of the applications and the issued permits for anything that you've done online. Now this will not include permits that you've done in person, but any applications that were done online, those will be included on your My Permits list. And this provides a helpful summary because you can see the case number, case name, the case type. In the case of electrical permits, EC designates an electrical commercial permit and ER is for electrical residential. You'll see the date that you applied for the permit and also the case status. There are three statuses that are relevant for electrical permits. The first is pending and this is the status that will be applicable up until the point you finish your application. Once you've finished your application but prior to payment, you will notice that your application is in the application mode. Once you have paid the fees, your application will be permitted. The only other status that you will typically see is closed after an inspection has been completed. If you notice that your application has changed from permitted or closed to the pending status, that means that there was a mistake with your electrical application and someone from the permitting office will contact you to correct any mistakes that you made. Once you've completed an application but you have not paid, there is a pay fees link that you can use to access the payment screen to pay any fees that are pending. And then finally after the permit has been issued, you will check the print view button and that will allow you to print a copy of your permit. Immediately after paying, your permit will go to the permitted status. So there is no intervention required on DPI's part to have your permit issued. Once you pay the fees, the permit will be issued and you can click the print view link here. From the permit license menu, choose create electrical permit to begin creating your electrical application. Again, here is the handy online electrical permits email address in case you have any questions. The electrical permit application is very simple and if you've created a paper application in the past, you will have no problem creating an electrical application. Under the electrical permit, you will notice there's a location. This is triggered by the tax account number. The tax account number is publicly available and if you don't know the tax account number you can find it by clicking the SDAT Real Property Search link. Once you've entered the tax account number you will notice that the address information is completed automatically. The only two options that you can edit are the street number and unit and this is for minor changes for example if the property that you're working in is 9402 maybe within a strip mall or an apartment complex and then you can also put a unit number here as well. Then you'll complete the property owner information. Ensure that you enter the same owner information that is reflected above from the tax account number. If the information is the same, you can click here. Then you enter in the owner name. You will want to provide a phone number for the owner. Under building information, choose whether it's a new or an existing building. 
if you're working in a residential or commercial space and you'll notice that for commercial even if you're working on a solar panel or generator in a house those will still be grouped as commercial permits you'll want to enter your work description being as descriptive as possible and ensuring that any information that is needed by the utility company is entered first in your description of work. You will notice that your electrical contractor information is automatically populated from your profile. Now upon completion of this first step you will notice that there is a link to step two. You can also save and exit. This is for those occasions where you don't need to finish the application in this one setting. You can always save it and come back in later and access this application from your My Permits list. So let's proceed to step two. On step two, this is where you will itemize all of the different work items that you'll be completing for this job. Under electrical items you will see the special items section and in this section all of these items require a building permit. Now that's not to say that other items on the application will not require a building permit but the remaining items below the special items section require your professional knowledge to know whether or not a building permit is required. But in the case of special items, a permit is always required. So if I choose fire alarm here, you will notice that all the other options on the form are disabled. And the reason for this is that any item in the special items section must go on a permit on its own. You cannot combine work in the special items section with any other items. However, if items are actually allowed by code and make sense from a business perspective, you can actually combine activities onto a permit as long as they're not in the special items section and as long as it complies with code. A couple of other points that I'll make about the special items section. You will notice here that there's a separate option for a residential versus commercial. And anytime you see a segment you should go ahead and enter the quantity. Don't try to calculate the number of segments as that will be calculated automatically for you by the system. A couple of other important points. Under electrical items, you will notice that there is a separate option for cut off and cut in. You can choose one or both of these items as needed. A few other points here under electrical items again Here's a note that segments will be automatically calculated for you. So in this section, if you want to enter information, just enter the quantity. Service size and power company are mandatory fields if you're doing any of the following types of work. Reintroduction of power, cut in, cut off, new dwelling, service equipment heavy up, or transfer switches. If you did not select any of those work items, you do not have to and you are not able to complete service size and power company. And then if a building permit number is required, you must use your professional knowledge to know when that occurs, then you must enter the complete building permit number here and that does need to be a permit that is in the issued status. Once you've completed the items for which you'll be applying, then you will go in and hit the submit button. Upon hitting submit, you will notice that there is a summary of fees and you will have a chance to go back if for some reason you believe that you've entered incorrect information or you didn't understand the fees that were being calculated. A processing fee is mandatory and is processed on all applications regardless of if they're done in person or online. If everything looks good here, you can finalize your application by clicking the Confirm Submit button. You will see that I now have a confirmation page 
that lets me know that my application has been submitted successfully and then I can visit this link to pay my fees. I am now on the fee payment screen. You will notice that the menu options here are different. So even though this application looks similar to the electrical application, I'm actually in the fee payment module. Now this screen is very self-explanatory and this process is very easy to walk through. I will make, however, just a couple of points. In the top under ePayments, if you pick block multiple case, you can enter in any number of permits here and continue to click the Add Permit for Payment button and then you can pay for multiple payments in one transaction. Another point that I'll make is once you've gone through the payment process, if you choose to pay by a check, you will pay one flat rate of $1.49. However, if you pay with a credit card, no matter how many transactions you add to this shopping cart, you will be charged a flat 2.5% of the total fee value. Once you have finished your payment, you will have an opportunity to enter an email address so that you can be emailed a receipt. And once you return to your My Permits page, you will notice that that permit has been issued and the process is complete. You have now received your online electrical permit. This concludes the training. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for watching.